Hey everybody, this is Paul Lencioni from Blue Goose Market here with my good friend Billy Metzger from the Diamond Air. Where you will get a larger, better quality diamond for less. And one of my best friends. So What's up, Paulie? Uh, what's up, Billy? How are you, man? Ah, good thank you for here. doing this with me. Dude, so thanks for the uh, the invite. This is uh this is this is the place to be right now. Absolutely. Based on the spread I see in front of me. Oh, just wait. So, um, this is episode two of our vlog, and uh, this month, February, <laughs> Uh, if you take a look throughout social media, you're going to see a lot of things to drink at Blue Goose. So we're kind of doing a thing. So I figured one of my favorite things, something I've worked really hard on, wine. A lot of fun. And we're going to talk about wine pairings. We have uh, Valentine's Day coming up. Um, and honestly, we get a ton of uh, um, comments about, you know, how can you pair, you know, this for that? And how does it work? And um, honestly, pairing wine can be a little bit intimidating. So, And I know nothing about it. But so I'm going to be learning with you. Billy's my foil. Right. So the first book that I fell in love with that helped me with wine pairings, <laughs> Evan Goldstein's uh, Perfect Pairings. This is a book that I absolutely love. It's incredibly functional. Um, so if somebody wants to learn a lot about wine pairings, this is a great place to start. I took the cliff notes. There you Still go. Still know nothing. Let's just jump into it. Let's talk about okay. some, uh, are you ready for this? Let's do it, dude. So we're going we're gonna to talk about wine pairings and the ideas behind it. And then Billy and I are going to eat a bunch of stuff. And, and uh, drink wine. You're my guinea pig. Yeah. So. I'm glad it didn't come on paper plate month. There. You know? <laughs> That's awesome. First idea in wine pairing, if you've got nothing else and you're just trying to make <laughs> sure it kind of makes sense, um, the, 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 the old rule of thumb is match color with color. So. Red wines with red colored foods. So Easy enough. absolutely. So red meat, um, red sauces, red sauce, white wine, fish, cream sauces. It's actually a little bit too basic, but if you don't have anything else, you can start there. So um, okay. a little better idea <laughs> is pair food from a region with wine from that region. So if you've got an Italian white um, that's by the sea, you're going to get salinity. Great pair with fish, mussels. Makes sense. Love mussels. If you've got uh, um, big red wines from Bordeaux, think uh, big heavy sauces, a lot of, lot of butter, absolutely, and you have all these big tannins. Uh, you, in, it's throughout Europe, you have wine regions where they've been making <laughs> wine for centuries and that food for centuries. They figured it out. They put them together. Right. So They know more than we do. They do. That being said, before we really go into the rest of it, let's kind of talk about some of the uh, the basic ideas in man. In this food looks good. Elements of you know, hold tight, Billy. Okay. Hold tight. <laughs> so, um, basic elements of flavor when you talk about wine pairing, you have tannins. Tannins are in red wine; they come from the grapes. Um, it's tannins are what give you that velvety feel. When I think tannins, I think merlot. Um, okay. uh, richness, um, luxuriousness, velvet. Um, a wine that has a, an elegant feel. Um, I usually think. A lot of that has to do with tannin. Another idea, acidity. So acidity can be sharpness, brightness, the acid backbone of a wine. Um, if you get it wrong, um, like it can be a little tinny in reds. It can be if you don't have enough acid in white, you'll uh, uh, they'll be a little flabby. But um, acid is is really good part but of structure. Just the right amount of acid. You you what you're looking for in all wines, you want to find balance. So okay. we're just talking about what are the elements of balance. Got you got it. alcohol. Um, you want your alcohol in balance, too much alcohol, and you call it hot, but it's another element that adds structure to your wine. Um, fruit, fruit is the flavor uh, in wine, but fruit can be a lot of different elements. And it's not exactly talking about, yes, berries can be fruit, jammy though, or a fruit bomb, you get a lot of fruit forward wines and a lot of style collect uh, 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 style committed wines, um, or cocktail kind of kind of wines that are made in more of a, like a, a, a cocktail style, so you can just drink them without like a, food. Like a bitters, almost? No, 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 not no. at all. Just when you talk about a cocktail wine, it's not exactly a food wine. It doesn't have the balance for it. It's just, it's fun and it's real easy. Okay. A lot of that has to do with being fruit forward, so um, you'll get all the fruit components of the flavor. Um, like a cassis is, is the flavor of uh, um, cap, so, and that's the berry component. Um, okay, that's another big element. You can get smoke, you can get vanilla from uh, um, from oaking. If you get a light oak, the, the, the same com compounds that give vanilla its flavor are actually found in oak barrels. Um, you can also get nuttiness, char, toast, and the amount of time and what type of oak it's been in can have a big, uh, uh, it'll drive the character of that oakiness. So um, those are kind of the elements that you're talking about. So you're thinking about that and you're looking for balance in different elements that are creating all of these really complex flavors in wine. Now, that being said, 
the deeper ideas in pairing wine, you really want to match elements in your food uh, with the wine. In fact, a lot of times when you're doing pairings, uh, chefs and sommeliers will see wine as almost another ingredient into the dish. So yeah. let me give you an idea about that. So you get a really light heartiness with lentils and the acidity of a, a Sauvignon Blanc goes really well with that. They pair well, um, one cleans out so you can appreciate the heartiness of the other one. The heartiness really makes the acid backbone really go well. Brightness, that is a really good pair. Another way that you can think of, and I was talking about a little bit, um, you know, when you get the richness and the structure, like in an Australian Syrahs, okay. which is a which little I bit like. more fro forward, oh, terrific wines, mm -hmm. that goes well because you have this structure with this, you know, this really strong, dense fruitiness. Uh, you can do even like a barbecue uh, with that because you get the smokiness of the barbecue that really works with the Pork structure. shoulder, something like that. Yeah, absolutely. But you're talking, I mean, going with the sauce and all of it, like full smoke on it. Mm -hmm. That is a really good pairing. But you've got those ideas that kind of work together. So you right. can have like a good complement. You can have a good contrast. A lot of times you have something that is like the sauce is the major element in a dish. You, you take a, a dish where it's, it's really about the... Uh, um, uh, kind of the, the bright, rustic flavor of like a rosemary. Okay. And a lot of times you, you, you don't want to pair that with too big a wine because you want the nuance to come through, but it looks really good with like a, 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 a bright light white with strong acidity because the two really accentuate each other. So you can have a lot of fun with that. There are a lot of different ways to think about your flavor combinations just like you would in your cooking. Now one, one last thing, there's a couple things to know um, and I want to forget about this. That are, it's just good to know is make sure that uh, you're 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 balancing um, you know the weight of your food. Sometimes you don't want uh, a, a huge dish um, to go with like a light white wine, or uh, because in that like if you have a, a really like a, a a Pinot Grigio that's got its melon flavors and you're eating that with a big rich steak, you're not going to taste the Pinot so Grigio. There's kind of some all. common sense in there too. Some of it, yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> Um, but the same way, if, if you're eating something like I was just talking about, like uh, something that's got like a, a really interesting herbal component to it, like rosemary, and, right? Exactly. Yeah. And you and you and you drink that with a, a a big cab, you're gonna blow it out. Another thing, when you have a lot of tannins, like think of your Bordeaux um, uh, or Zinfandel. If you eat that with a really fishy fish like salmon, usually that's like maple syrup and the OJ. You know, you hit that OJ and you're like, mm. yeah. you don't want to do that. You want to avoid no. that. So those are some of the rules that we're talking about. But do you know, tannins go hand in hand with alcohol content or completely separate? No, totally separate. A okay. lot of these things happen, um, happen separately. You can find bigger wines because you want the talons to balance the alcohol, but that's the winemakers doing that. That's a great question. So um, good wine is going to be really well balanced. And that's when you're drinking a wine that's not like it's kind of not up to snuff. You'll notice one side is completely out of balance. It kind of tastes funky, and you might not know why you don't like it. But usually, you'll be like, "Yeah, it's pretty obvious." Yeah, that's, we, what, this, that's what this bucket is for. Just yeah, like, exactly. That's 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 the dump bucket. So right. if we, uh, but we're not gonna. Yeah, we picked all of these, so we're not gonna have any losers. We so, should be good. So one thing to realize is, you know, we're talking about spoiled grapes. You know, biology makes that happen, man. People have BHDs in all of this. So let's not get too crazy because we could go down the rabbit hole with this. The one thing that's important is that understanding what we're trying to do helps us navigate to having more fun, having great meals, and just happiness. So, um, ooh, one, and this is for Kate, our Kate. chef. Wine in the pan, wine in the glass. All right? One, that? there's no such thing as cooking. Always cook with wine that you would drink. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. It's an ingredient. I mean, I do that, but I didn't really know why. Because you're smart. You're just yeah. naturally smart, really. Sound like a good idea. I, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, don't ever cook with wine that you wouldn't drink with. And whatever you cooked with is actually going to go pretty well with your meal. So those are the basics. So like white wine vinegar, don't cook with that? Because I wouldn't drink that. Don't, don't do that. No. Okay. Well, I mean, vinegar. I mean, if you're looking for vinegar, right. use it for vinegar. But if you're like white cooking, oil, uh, cooking wine, just... Get, get, get a bottle, I mean, if it's supposed to be, it's probably something tart. Get a Sauvignon Blanc, you know, and just go ahead and use that. And then just, you yeah. know. It doesn't have to be super exp expensive. But no, least. not at all. Okay. But <clears throat> cooking wine, no, just, it's not worth it. Waste. It's an ingredient, absolutely. You wouldn't, you wouldn't cook with, uh, you know, like a rotten piece of meat or bad fruit, would you? Yeah, bad yeah. tomato. No. No, absolutely. So, 
That being said, we've got some different uh, things to drink and try here. Mm -hmm. So, um, as always, when you're doing a wine tasting, you want to start from your lights and go forward. So, um, okay. we have a lot of different food, and we got stuff chilling out. And I don't know, you guys can't see it, but Billy's dog, Adrian, who is one of my best friends. Adrian. Also, here you go. That a girl. No, nope, we'll, we'll, we'll get you on camera hi. later. Yeah, we'll get you on camera. So let's start. We brought two wines, and Go we're down. gonna try Go on. a lot of different things. I'm making a mess. I'm dripping on Adrian. You still can't see Adrian, but I just dripped on her. She likes it. Oh, she's a good girl. She's a bully. She has her own Instagram page, so you can just go to Yo Adrian on Instagram. Follow her in the Diamond Air. First thing that we're gonna talk, uh, take a look at. This is. One of your lighter whites, this is Chenin Blanc. Um, the Loire Valley in the north of France um, has a village where Chenin Blanc is uh, really popular. This is Petit, this is from South America. Um, Ken Forrester, who's a great guy. South Africa. South Africa. Um, I, I knew what I was talking about. You knew what you meant. Absolutely. I've met Ken Forrester. He was here at Blue Goose and uh, he, he's a cool guy. So this is North France. Um, the, the, the varietal is best known from the Loire Valley in North France. It's from a village called Vouvray. A lot of people have heard of Vouvray. And this is the thing that confuses a lot of people about Europe. In Europe, they'll name grapes, say, take France, they'll name it after the region, not the grape. So grapes that you think you know are from a region, and then that region will make them taste different than you were thinking because they make them in a regional the style. Right, so they're they're blending and they're mixing. So this is Chenin Blanc, and and I've heard too. A customer of mine told me that the further north you go in Europe, the less alcohol content. Yeah, pretty much. No, the um, grapes, the grapes are more. Nah, I stronger mean stronger the further south you go. Not no? not really, um, uh, because you can get. Of course, lower, from Italy, so yeah, you're biased. Yeah, you can, you can get lower alcohol grapes from Italy and higher alcohol grapes. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm sure he's a genius, but I disagree. Okay. With Fundamentally disagree. Gotcha. Right. Absolutely. We're going to go ahead and agree to disagree. Okay. So in the Chenin Blanc, you know, often Fouvray, like I was saying, um, you're going to get a lighter grape um, and, and it, there's bright. Here, go ahead and take a taste. Okay. Mmm. Um, nice. Melon. I feel like approachable. Hey. Here's you. Hey, Billy, go ahead and say it. Get it out of the way for everybody. Remember, gentlemen, size does matter. That's my guy. Hey. Got to get the cheese out of the way. Mm. So you get nice acidity to it. You get some melon flavors, really approachable fruit. That's good. It's really fresh, but it's not super sweet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, let's let's take a look because you've got quite a few pears here that work pretty well. Okay. Um, you know what? Let's start with the, uh, the cream soup. This is... Um, a Tuscan cream soup. Um, this stuff's delicious. So the acidity is going to cut through on some of that. It'll stand up. It has, a, and the acidity is really going to be what this pairing is about. And I see what you meant earlier too about having something that's kind of, kind of robust in the soup, mm -hmm. but then mixing it with something that's light that doesn't—they don't overwhelm each other. Absolutely. <clears throat> you know, but they stand up to each other, and you taste them both. Now, if you were going to take a look, and maybe maybe at the end of this, try some bad pairings and see how that works out, where you'll notice that... I'll do it. You know, some of the lacing of the... Uh, you're, you're crazy, man. You're a wild man, Billy. I, I love it. I'll be a guinea pig all day. That's why you're here. Um, you know, but then, if you take a look at uh, um, the prosciutto, which is always... You'll get some nuttiness, almost... Always delicious. You know, <clears throat> sweetness from it. Going in another direction, but still a really nice pairing. Mm. It's pretty fantastic. It's not a bad way to spend an evening. It's really not. But you notice how the the more of the melony flavors they bring out a little bit more, uh, uh, almost a smoky flavor of the prosciutto. Yeah. Yeah, because mm -hmm. you got you got a different backdrop, and they're highlighting different flavors. That's that's how that works, and that's what you're looking for. You don't want your flavors to step on each other. You want them to brighten each other up. You want them to harmonize. Very much. Um, it's definitely a different story between the wines and the food. Um, now with that, charcuterie, one of the ideas between, uh, behind a really <coughs> good charcuterie plate is you get so many different flavor combinations and you can taste it with your wine and you can put different things together and you can kind of 
formulate your own pairings and you, you're you're really just kind of you know having fun building things with your palette. What's what's a sh sh charcuterie sh plate? Charcuterie plate. Yeah. Most people think of it as just a, 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 um, a meat and meat and cheese, cheese right? meat and cheese. But you should also get some berry flavors. So you can take all those. So you you, you know, a lot of times you'll get uh, um, a mustard. You know you get some fig. So you get some sweetness, some apricots. Um, sometimes there'll be uh, dried cherries, but you want you know some of those sweetness, uh, some of the sweetness there. You get some of the, the the cheese, so you get that bitterness. You'll get some ham. So you'll get like some fat. Finger, it's like a finger plate. Absolutely, but what you're doing is actually building different fla flavor profile bites. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's fun. That's why I so love it. You want to hit different different palate, different taste buds. Absolutely. All, all, all around the plate. Yeah, it's just about being creative, for sure. Awesome. Well, this mm -hmm. is a good. I'm not a huge fan of white normally. This is this is a really good. This is delicious. Mm-hmm. But I mean, think about how much of that, you know, how much of it is, is the glass or how you're putting it together. Right. But there is, there is definitely the Chenin Blanc is about the fruit component. Now, what you're going to take a look at here, and we're going to try some of the same things. Adding in the Telegio. Um, so the Telegio is a, a soft cheese, and actually the Telegio is pretty terrific with the Chenin Blanc too. But the, the Telegio is a soft cheese like a brie that is um, Italian. Okay. Soft cheese. <clears throat> Telegio makes one of the world's best sandwiches. Um, you gotta try this. Do they? Oh man, are you, you know joking me? I me? love sandwiches. You you do Telegio on a um, on like a salami sandwich or like really? an Italian cold cut sandwich. That's that's the stuff. I, I don't think I've had that. Mm -hmm. A dish that's a little bit more about the butter too, because you're gonna get a totally different combination. So we've got the Rombauer chard. That is um, an incredibly rich, oaky, California-style uh, shard. Uh, the Rombauer is luxurious, rich, a little higher viscosity. Um, viscosity? Yeah, absolutely. You'll, you'll get that mouthfeel. <coughs> Take a look at the wine first. You still get that beautiful acidity to it. Uh, still incredibly bright fruit, fruit flavors, but you get... A little bit, a little bit more buttery, more crisp too. Um, you, yeah, it, it, it's it's bigger, richer, so more acid. This is a butter aftertaste to it. There you go. Yeah. So you've got you've got oakiness, you've got a lot of things going on. This is, a, this is the type of white uh, white wine my wife would love. Mm -hmm. So she's gonna yell at me later. Sorry, babe. Yeah, why didn't you bring Lauren? She was invited. Yeah. I'm totally just trying to get you in trouble. I know it worked. <laughs> Don't put both of us in the doghouse. So that cheese, I could see how it would be really good on a sandwich. Mm -hmm. All so, right. What is this chicken again? Uh, so this is the veal piccata. So you're you got uh, bigger, richer flavors, and and uh, <laughs> I really want to see take take that chicken bite, and okay. um, and then so you, you taste follow your lead, dude. Yeah, Thanks. you t you tasted the Rombauer. Now, take a really good bite. Okay. Veal, the chicken piccata from our uh, from our deli, and then maybe a little bite of the cheese. Mm, try the wine. No, do the wine mm -hmm. next. Do you notice the difference? Chills out. The richness is is uh, a bigger part of uh, the flavor profile of it. There's not as much bite to the wine after that, after that bite. Absolutely. Well, you know the butter, the butter in what you're eating is making different flavors a little bit more available. The butter opened up the butter. That's one of the secrets with uh, big red wines, is is the uh, the fat in um, in a in a steak really mellows out the tannins and some of the structure. A lot of times when you have some of these big red French wines, the structure in the wine um, will mask the fruit. But once either you let it open up for quite some time or sometimes you pair it with uh, um, a steak that's that's got a lot of fat to it, which will kind of, the fat will coat your mouth and all of a sudden it'll slow down and kind of mellow out some of those compounds. And then that's when you really see the fruit come forward. So sometimes, you get a big red wine, like a, a big French Bordeaux, and you eat it with a steak or, or a, a, a cream sauce. And it's not always necessarily drink the wine and then eat the steak. Com it's, yeah, both of them <laughs> together, but the two flavors are gonna bounce off of each other. And I'll tell you what, if you've ever heard of a Proustian moment, when you get that wine pairing just right, in fact, I had Kate um, make one of these things. 
the two of them taste so good together. It will make them take. It'll create a moment that you will not forget. A Brewstein like, moment. Brewstein moment. Nice. Absolutely. The you with the Madelines, you get that. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if everybody knows about it, but it's it's when you're describing that moment where it just takes you back and it's just everything kind of gets small and you're like, oh my gosh, this is terrific. Right. Very acute moment. Yes. Yeah. We have the a Barbaresco that we're gonna do with a, um, a really rich red sauce that has oh, nice. uh, um, pancetta in it because that pig fat with the Italian red. One of the things to avoid is sometimes you can do some things like if you're doing a spicy spicy <laughs> dish, you want to avoid um, like a big red because that spice will grab onto that structure and they will like they will compound really? each other absolutely. So I never knew that because mm -hmm. my wife and I we make a lot of spicy dishes. Yeah, we use we use a lot of like as a as a sauté base. We use a lot of like peppers, some Thai peppers. Mm -hmm. But I love red wine, so I'll drink like a bold red wine. But it, it, that's so if you wanted red wine, that's why I'd say go for a cocktail wine. So something that's about the fruit and not about that back end and that structure. Because that structure, if you get like a lot of tannin, literally the two will just just multiply each other and, and it, it's too much. It, yeah, absolutely. It, they, they, that's not a great way to go. What's a, what's a good cocktail wine that you could think of off the top of your head? That um, if, a, a lot of Australian... Um, Red Shirazes, some of the jammier, okay, so, a Shiraz. so one of Australia. so one of the jammier um, uh, Zinfandel. Malbec. Uh, Malbec is another good one. I do like Malbec. You're a genius. That's why you run wine. Thanks, Kate. Yep. And off camera, uh, Kate Bjorkland, resident chef, producer, wine manager, sister, awesome person. All right, let's go red. Another thing, so not exactly a cocktail wine, but um, one of the ones that I threw in one of the most mellow reds out there. I got a Pinot Noir, and this one is actually... I was gonna say, do you, when you merge mm -hmm. from a white to a red, do you do it subtly? I mean, does it matter which one you switch to first? Um, you wanna go from generally lighter to bigger, and you want to ease into tannins. The tannins will actually re react with your mouth. Tannins is the same thing that you tan leather hide with. It is actually having a chemical reaction with your mouth. Really? Absolutely. When I go to uh, really prestigious tasting that are going to have a bunch of huge reds, you have to eat everything. And honestly, to be to be fair, I got about fifteen big wines before my mouth is shot. Just shot. Absolutely. The the the, 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 the those huge reds. I mean, they just take it out of you. So, so what are we doing? Pinot Noir, <clears throat> and you can take a look. I, I mean, even even when you look at it. You you can see it's not as inky. There's not as many like compounds in it. You can you can t see by your eye. In the jewelry industry, we call this purplish red. <laughs> <laughs> so technically, purplish red. Yeah. There you go. The Pinot Noir has a very thin skin, mm -hmm. um, uh, so you don't get the tannins with it. You get depending on where it's made. Pinot Noir is the only grape in um, Burgundy, which is my favorite style of wine. Burgundy is absolutely amazing. But you get the the um, burgundy style. It's dirty, earthy, funky, beautiful on this lighter red grape. Garnet. Ah. Uh, in California, you'll get more of a round profile. Um, you'll get more. Let's say that's more that's berry flavors. Probably my favorite one. Yeah, yeah. There you go. And Tortoise Creek. This stuff is incredibly affordable. This. Like for Pinot Noir, you usually say that you can't find a good Pinot Noir under seventeen bucks. Eleven bucks. Layman's Sorry. terms, you know, it's not too dry. I, it's, it's very smooth, really good. Um, but about the fruit, you're not going to notice a bunch of structure on the back end. But now, take a look at um, we have the spicy Capicola, and that spice because you don't have all that tannin in Capicola. there. Capicola. I I don't know, Billy. I don't know about your Italian <laughs> impression. My wife, my wife should die. Mm -hmm. Not I. You know, really, I mean, you, you still, mm -hmm. you, you know, it all kind of comes through. And, you know, well, we haven't done a bad pairing yet. So wow. we haven't seen two flavors really get stepped on all that much. It's money. Yeah. That kind of uh, berry to cherry uh, profile. Are you just grabbing these nuts? Yeah. Oh, and these are Marcona <laughs> almonds, so roasted almonds, special roasted. And they're very, they've got an oil coating on them. They're phenomenal. Damn. You didn't know about Marcona olives? I had no clue. Yeah, man. Marcona olives are your thing. They're special. Wow. <clears throat> You're going to get, you, you get more of that cherry flavor coming out. So, California, you mm -hmm. get that. Then you get uh, um, Lamet Valley. You get these really hardcore dried cherries. Totally different flavor. Not not the, the round flavors. It's it's a lot 
It's a lot different, just dry cherries. And then you get Burgundy, where you get all this beautiful Pinot Noir funk. You wouldn't believe it. And you're the, saying that Pinot Noir is the only one that's, that's the only Burgundy cherry. That, uh, well, they're grapes, but yes. Okay. I'll do the line. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no. That's the only grape in Burgundy if you're talking about a Burgundy. I mean, we're not going to talk about Gamay. Gamay, my least favorite grape. Sorry, sue me, Gamay Veal. I'm just not a Gamay guy. They're not watching. Another great cocktail wine. If you want to do like a light fish and still do a red, Pinot Noir is the way to go. Perfect. Absolutely, because you'll notice in that you don't get the tannin. So we've got uh, Barbaresco, Reserva. So you'll notice old world style. Um, you'll get a lot more structure to this. I, I don't, I, I always personally, and this is just a Paul thing, I call this bodega style. You get old world, dirty, earthy. The fruit, ah, oh, just smell it. You get cedar box, you know, that smoke, a little bit of tobacco leaf. Pungent. And that berry hiding underneath it. But you notice that the berry is a little less available. So the Italian reds um, with with uh, pig fat, because mm -hmm. that fat coats your mouth a little bit, and all and of a, a sudden- a little bit more of that pig fat? Yes. Adrian would like a uh, plate too. I yes. bet you would. Adrian, you didn't want to get on camera. Now all of a sudden you're perking up? Come on now. Yeah. See how it's lingering in your mouth? Mm. See how it's a totally different flavor? It completely changed it. Yeah, absolutely. Transformed it. Because the two are, are melting in together, um, and they're took they're away some of, took away some of that like some of the tobacco flavor the, took away some of the pungentness of mm -hmm. it and the berry becomes a little bit more available. Wouldn't it crazy? Wow. I mean, but most people go and eat and they're like, oh, am I enjoying it or not? And they don't notice, right? You know, um, you just plow through the meal. Like on that one though, if I give you that blue right there, if you want to be a little less happy for a second, take a shot of that blue cheese. Which gorgonzola is this, Kate? Dolce. Dolce. It means it's very young. Oh. It's awful. No, stop. <laughs> it's a bad pairing, though. It's I mean, bad. I mean, I want to go and take another sip of my wine, but I don't want it to get even worse. I, you know, and, and I'm also not sure I really like that cheese, but I can see that, that that's a really bad pairing. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so if you didn't it's, like it's it. It's not rocket science. But here, you want to oh, take a look at this. You'll, you'll notice another way. This will stand up, but it won't be perfect. We're doing the Wait, soup? Yeah, it's pretty rich, but... It is? It'll be okay. You see how it fought with the cream a little bit? Mm-hmm. With this, with the cream soup? The cream soup is delicious, the wine's delicious, but the two do kind of fight. A little bit, and you might not notice it. You're like, oh, and you'll just take a second, and you won't notice it. However, save the wine for, you know, going back and forth with the red sauce. Now we're just gonna go uh, a little bit of the straight red sauce the Alessi Creamy Princess Sauce. So you can notice this one. So what, now, what color so now, is that? <clears throat> so now we're going to a... Big, Merlot, beautiful Napa Cab. Cabernet. So this is a Cab. I didn't get like a big velvety Merlot. I didn't know there Merlot. was going to be a quiz. Um, there's not. This is experience. I, I, I love this. If you're looking for a go-to <laughs> like crowd pleaser, wow, that's really good. Um, experience will do that for you. And you smell that even just on the nose. You can tell it's uh, you know, you get that dark fruit. Mm -hmm. Um we're old friends. I like I like the It's kinda like I it's like kinda the, like, like seeing an old friend when you smell this. I like the path you're taking uh, through here, Paul. You know? Mm -hmm. Going from the Pinot to the cab. And you see a lot more structure. You know, well balanced though. You see that acidity, that tartness? It's but good. then there's you've got it's a good cab. I've, the never, structure. I've never had experience. Oh, dude. <laughs> Billy's not experienced. No, I am now. Mm. The Capicola is not spicy enough for that really to jump off too hard against the tannins, which might be a little bit smoky of a of a prosciutto to uh, go perfect with the cab, but it's not bad. This I take this. This is this is probably a better fit with the uh, Barbaresco. Take a look. Try some of the uh, um, the cab with uh, the prosciutto, yep. and you'll notice that the bitter kind of kind of clashes. So it's too strong. Can I have bites? Yeah. Do you see how the, the, the bitter components are kind of coming forward? And you're like, well, that wasn't my favorite part of the wine. And it, I didn't. But when I, I just took a sip of it immediately after the uh, mm -hmm. the, the creamy pasta, it, it wasn't bitter at all. Nope. 
It's amazing. Yeah. Completely changed the wine. Absolutely. So that's why I'm saying wine pairing is a real thing. This is a killer book. Evan Goldstein did a magnificent job talking about wine pairings in a simple way. Uh, Great Wine Made Simple. This was one of my first books, and this is not the original copy that we had, but if you want to re really take a look at wine and walk through it and get some good, uh, um, I guess, guidance, this is a phenomenal. This was one of my first books. Is it? Um, that's a really, really good book. Uh, but, you know, we, I, honestly, I probably that was that was the first wine book I ever bought, and I bought a lot worse since then. Um I've bought a lot of good ones, but I still go back to, that's one of my main books when it comes to wine. Um, anybody who, it's just, it's absolutely the right amount of information, um, talks about it in the right way. It it asks you to do a fair amount of wine drinking. Yeah. Swiss German a little I bit. I.e. study. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But, um, and when you when you think about what I was doing, um, when, uh, when it was actually for, started before moving over, uh, moving the store over here and nobody in the store knew anything about wine so is that true Before yeah we moved over here absolutely and so yeah. they said well nobody knows anything and i was kind of the resident nerd so yeah. like paul figure it out i was still, out. still in my 20s so at the time i was going to ask you is how you how you got in you know because it's not like you're you're not a, you're not a natural born wine connoisseur no not at no. all um and and um so i actually because we were thinking that we were going to add a wine section and we didn't know anything and i'm bad I'm very bad at being bad at things. You've seen this probably. Right. So yeah, I just, true. I read everything. Made it a mission. Made it a mission. Also, it helps that you like wine. I did. At the time, I didn't have any relationship with wine. I had to figure None. it out on my own. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't have any, I didn't really care for wine until I met my wife. Mm -hmm. She got me into red. And then, oh, there's Adrian. So, so she, she got me into red, but then when she got pregnant with my son, mm -hmm. she her taste buds for red died. Really? Yeah, and she became a Chardonnay drinker. We were talking about wine, but what, so when did you fall in love with diamonds, Billy? Uh, when I was about five, about five years old. Um, been around diamonds most of my life, and uh, my dad was, he was a traveling wholesaler. So in the 80s, what wholesalers would do is they'd have trunk shows. So they'd travel, you know, uh, with a setter, mm -hmm. go to Texas, take over a store, pay a percentage, my dad would sell the diamond, setter would sell the setting, and then they put they put the two together. Um, so, so then I guess 1989, my dad opened his first store. I was mm -hmm. I was like seven in the store. Um, it was right next door to a Rocky Chocolate Rocky Mountain Chocolate Factory. Oh no, good. Which Where was that? Too because I really liked the, uh, <laughs> the Oreo apples, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, downtown Naperville. One of my favorite, my, when I was a kid, um, at uh, uh, Graham's, I used Billy, to... I got you. There you go. Thanks, Billy. Anytime. <laughs> <laughs> I used to, I, I was like a five-year-old, and this is how long Bob's been doing chocolate over at Graham's. It was over next to the U and I, and I would like watch him making chocolate with my face smashed Yeah, that's what I was doing. Up. That's what I was doing. I was going outside the store, and so, you know, my family, we've always had the old school buzzer doors, which mm -hmm. I still have to this day in downtown right. St. Charles. So, you know, I'd be out there and, you know, face, you know, and hands looking in there. The problem was the location that Rocky Mountain Chocolate Factory had in downtown Naperville at that time mm -hmm. was facing the west. So the sun would be going down and it would just, like, melt everything. Mm -hmm. like, uh -huh. So they, they, had to, they had to, like, move the opposite side. Chocolate was melting in the windows. Luckily, diamonds don't melt. <laughs> so that location was a good location for us. And my wife and I took it over in 2009 mm -hmm. so collectively 30 years wow and we moved to uh, st charles 2014. diamonds have always been my passion but we've been since we moved here we've been doing a lot of custom design my wife has good designing um instincts and we do full service repair lauren again you're magnificent absolutely wish you were here babe but paul didn't invite you i that's <laughs> not none of that's true break it down you absolutely. start start you can start with colors yeah, and then you can uh, break it down if you uh, want to go to like different regions, mm -hmm. and then ultimately you don't want to screw up really good wine with the really good food. Billy said it best: a lot of common sense. What makes sense will uh, will really take you a long time. If you're uh, a long way, if you're a cook, um, just think about the flavors, try it. Do not, if you get one thing, 
Do not cook with wine that you don't want to drink. I hope you've had a lot of fun. Uh, go ahead and subscribe if you like this. We're going to do more cool stuff. You want to know what would be cool? Let me know out of all of the tips that you got today, uh, which one did you like the best? Which one did you uh, find the most helpful? Or uh, tell us what you liked about like Mine what was doing. the Pinot Noir with the pig fat. Yeah, absolutely. You know, but, you know, maybe that's not yours. Hey, everybody. I didn't tell Billy. We you have didn't. a wine tasting event February 15th. Why don't you come on down? What are we tasting on the 15th? Everything. Everything. So if you like everything wine, and if come you like on down. your jewelry being cleaned at the same time while you're drinking. If you don't know, so Billy, uh, when we have wine demos and really cool events, Billy will bring his uh, cleaning equipment down here and he will clean um, engagement rings. And when you see what your engagement look, ring looks like after Billy cleans it, it's magnificent. It no is charge. Complimentary. Absolutely. Billy. Hey, Paul. Enjoyed guy. it, man. Absolutely. Thanks for the invite. Fun. And thank you, everybody. Paul Lencioni from Blue Goose Market. We'll see you in the store. Thanks, guys.